So welcome, my dear students. Uh, this is your doctor, uh, your teacher, Osama Kashwa, and this is another lecture in the leadership, a new lecture in leadership. So leadership is how to persuade the others for change and how to move into the change. Like we said before, doing the change. It's not easy to do the change in organization. Let us see what I have here today for the leadership. Uh, we'll go there to the leader, leadership and we will talk here about four topics actually. We will handle uh, four topics that are, those topics are factors affecting the style of leadership, types of leadership styles, change leadership, and we had done uh, many videos and you will have it consequently about the change in the leader, leadership and how the leadership leads to change from top to bottom or bottom to top change. And the theories of leadership. So we will handle each of them one by one. Types of leadership style, as you see here, we have two types of leadership. Mainly we have autocratic or democratic, the autocratic is not participative. Like if you see everything is holding everything in his hand, no one is seizing the power by his hand. He is not listening, but he is rather talking and he don't allow the people to make decision with him. This is the autocratic. Meanwhile, the democratic or participative uh, leader is another kind, which is the opposite of the autocratic. That means, that uh, that is uh, like a kind of um, he allow uh, the participative allow the people to make a decision with him. They share in the decision making and they participate in all those aspects of the organization. That's what we call democr democratic or participative leader. On the second. Uh, uh, on another view, we see we have the free reign, which is the fair, let the people work. So I, the leader here put the objective, the main objective for the group and the group will achieve this objective. And uh, the other branch of it is paternalistic. And this is another kind of uh, leadership. Okay. We also will study the change leadership, like I told you before, and we will see what are the factors affecting the style and the theories of the leadership. We'll go now for the types of leadership style, and we'll talk in details about those types. The first type is the autocratic leader. What about the autocratic leader? The autocratic leader makes decision without reference to anyone else. So this type is like, remember Hitler, remember Mussolini in Italy, remember all these characteristics they use to just give the, the instructions. They don't listen. They don't have ears to listen, but they just talk. Also, uh, one of the main aspects of the autocratic that those people uh, whenever they succeed, the success is their own. They consider the success of their own. But if the, their decisions fail, then they will blame the others, that the others are the reason for this failure. So those are the autocratic uh, characteristics. They have high degree of dependency on uh, the leader. There will be in the organization where there is autocratic leader, all the employees will depend totally on the leader because they cannot do, make any decisions without getting back to the leader, can create a demotivation and alienation of stuff. And this is also frustrating the people because it leads to demotivation, which is the opposite of the motivation. The meaning of demotivation, the word demotivations, goes to that I'm frustrated. I don't have motivations to work. And this is the core meaning of the demotivation. Okay, 
we have also uh, so the people here in the organization where is where is autocratic leader in this kind type of organizations the people will totally depend on the uh, leader they cannot make decision of their own i remember i worked in a college there was an autocratic leader before and she used to keep the key of the safe box with her where the stamp of the exams uh, so if she was absent that means everything will stop all the work will be totally stopped till she come back because she depends she sees the power for her own self and she does not allow a new generation to participate in decision making all these are the aspects of the autocratic and also every one of us as teachers used to depend on her we cannot make a decision without going back to her because we feel that if we did something and she blame us after she will blame us and say why you didn't come back to me to ask me why you didn't get back to me to ask me about uh, this decision why did you do the decision by yourself so the autocratic leader is a kind of style which is unwanted undesired in any organization it's a type that it looks only for its own benefits and its own needs and he consider also that or she consider also herself that she's the one who understand and the others know and she will carry on the responsibilities of the decision in all the cases so she is very afraid or he is very afraid to delegate the authority all those are the characteristics of the autocratic leader also may be valuable in some types of uh, business yes as example the autocratic the autocratic which we are talking about can be valuable in military units that's fine because it's based on the orders that should be fine but not in a college or in a school or in a place where the, in a factory where the decision depends upon the information which comes from the lower levels and help the decision the, the decision maker to make his own decision so where decisions need to be made quickly and diverse this decisively means accurately so in that case yes uh, the autocratic leader is very welcome because you don't need in that case to take people's minds as example on the fire uh, like a fireman the fireman their leader shouldn't be like participative and they tell them shall we put the fire off or we, we make a meeting for making the fire putting the fire off no because if he do this if this is done then the fire will come all over the place the best thing is to act fastly very fast and in the same time uh, without uh, any kinds of taking the opinions of the others or uh, making a uh, democratic decision no that is the kind which need to act. so we talk here about the autocratic i will go now uh, to the here i will insert um, and say my first question today uh, discuss the autocratic leader discuss the autocratic leader and i will leave here around five minutes just to uh, have your answers just to have your answers on this question so discuss the autocratic leader uh, that's what i want you to know Uh, that's what I want you to answer right now. Discuss the nature the, of the autocratic leader. Yeah. And I will leave here around five minutes for the answer of this question. I will keep around five minutes.
for the answer of these questions. Thank you so much. Then we'll move forward. Discuss the autocratic leader type. Thank you so much. We are here for around five minutes, then we will move. Welcome, my dear students. We are back here. We are back here for the second part of our work today. Uh, the second type of the leadership styles, we call them the democratic leaders. The second type, we call them the democratic leaders. What about the democratic leaders and how they are? They encourage decision making. So those are the opposites of the autocratic leaders. They uh, encourage the decision make, making. So they let all the people help in decision. Absolutely, they are the opposite, exactly the opposite of the autocratic leader. So the democratic will encourage in decision making. From different perspectives, leadership may be emphasized uh, throughout the organization. So it might be emphasized throughout the organization. Okay, uh, we have also consultative process of consultation before decision to take. He gather the people or she gather the people in one place and they make a, a kind of uh, consultative decision, which means that all will share in the decision. Persuasive, persuasive is who try to sell for you his ideas. Like he sell to you his ideas. He tried to convince or persuade, persuade you with his ideas. Leader takes decisions and seeks to persuade others that the decision is correct. So here, yeah. So at least he's justifying his decision and he's trying to take your support. He's telling you I uh, the, the best decision in this um, problem, as example, is to expand our investment. The reasons I need to expand my investments is blah, blah, blah. So he put justification why did he take this decision? And he's trying to sell this decision into you. That's why we call it persuasive. Okay. Okay. We are talking about the democratic may help motivation and involvement because the people here, when they share in the decision, because in the democratic style, people share in decision-making. So in that case, that will increase their own motivation. Workers feel ownership of the firm. Yeah, because I share, I, I share in all the decisions, I participate in all the decisions, so I feel always that I am a part of this company. That's why. Improve the sharing of ideas also and experience within the business. Uh, so those all, because when we all share, if I have information or data, I will give it to you. The more the participation, the precise the decision is. The more the participation, the, the precise the decision should be. Uh, in the case, in that case, we all share together the ideas. So the decision will be better. But the only thing can be taken here, or we can call it disadvantage for the democratic style, is that it leads sometimes into decision delay, into decision delay. Why delay? Simply, very simply, because this kind of decision depends on to take time. It takes time till you execute it. That's why it depends on the uh, taking time will make it hard uh, because we wait till all the people uh, participate and when the people, too much people 
or members of the team will participate, then we will last more time. Because also, sometimes in, within this participation, people come to a conflict. I have an idea regarding this decision you took. Another person has opposite opinion. Someone support your opinion as a leader. Someone of the team does not support your opinion. So in that case, one support, the other does not support. In that case, there is a conflict. To solve the conflict, it takes time. That's why one of the uh, disadvantages of the democratic leadership is that it lasts it last, uh, more time than the autocratic, because the autocratic does not put a concern for anyone. He make his decisions without putting concern to any uh, other uh, person. That's why we uh, have to differentiate between both of them. Okay, we here now will talk, the second question will be, uh, let us go to a new slide and discuss the democratic leader. Discuss what you know about what you know, discuss or discuss the democratic leader. Uh, so talk about the democratic leader. What do you know about the democratic leader? How he works and so on. So discuss the uh, democratic leader. This is our second question today. Discuss the democratic leader and tell me what did you know about him? And actually, uh, I would like to take to receive your answer on the chat box. Uh, that will be fine. If your answers on the chat box, that will be fine. Uh, the chat box is here. Let me show it to you for some students who does not know. This is the chat box, so you can answer on the chat box. Okay, we'll give you around five minutes, then we'll move. We'll leave here, keep five minutes, then we will move forward. Thank you. Cool, then we will move into another idea. We're still talking about the types of leadership today in this lecture. We are talking about the types of leadership in this lecture. Okay, so we will talk here, we will say about uh, another style that is name is the say fair. And what do we mean by the say fair? The say fair, let it be. Let it be like the Beatles song. Remember from the Beatles song, let it be. So what's the little B? 
the leader responsibility are shared by all. So everybody share the responsibility. Can be very useful in business. It's exactly like MBO or what we say management by objectives use apply the laissez faire principle where creative ideas are important can be highly motivational yeah as people have control over their work life can make coordination and decision making time consuming and lacking in overall directions relies on good teamwork because he trusts the others he trusts all around him he knew what they are doing so relies on good interpersonal relations also. This is one of the main points for the Lise fair or let it be. Uh, before I move on uh, forward, we will watch a video about this type of leadership We will watch a video about this type of leadership that might uh, get the approach very close to our brains. And I hope we will get a good uh, video, a short one that would help us to understand the idea of the Lucy Fair. Uh, type of so uh, this one I think I hope that it work till the end it's seven minutes hope that it will work till the end Let us see uh, this video and the site is uh, study.com. You can go to it and the link is up here. You can see the link. Okay. Many of us choose to be in social groups because there are a number of benefits that we receive as members. We may choose to be in a group for instrumental or task reasons so that the other group members can help us accomplish something. Or we may choose to be in a group for expressive or emotional reasons so that the other group members can provide us with companionship, love, and security. Think about our social groups in the context of leadership. There are typically two types of leadership, instrumental and expressive. Instrumental leadership focuses on achieving goals. Leaders who are dominantly instrumental work to maintain productivity and ensure the tasks are completed. So the instrumental leadership, they focus on work more than they focus on people. They focus on the work more than they focus on the people. Okay. They make good managers because they get the job done. However, they are often so focused on the task that they can alienate other members of the group. Expressive leadership, on the other hand, focuses on maintaining group cohesion. Leaders who are dominantly expressive work to maintain warm, friendly relationships. So here, this kind, this style, focus more on the people. So we have the first one, focus more on the work. And the expressive leader will focus more on the people. Okay. And ensure that collective well-being of the group. They make good bosses because they truly care for their employees. However, they are sometimes lacking efficiency and organizational skills. Although most leaders are dominantly instrumental or expressive, both styles are needed for groups to work effectively. So the most effective leaders have the ability to use the style that best fits the situation. They can- Here I have to comment a small comment. She's saying, 
the style that's suitable to the uh, situation, which means uh, which means that not all the time you are instrumental and not all the time you are expressive, but you have to hold the thread from the middle. So uh, not always instrumental and not always expressive. Switch from being instrumental and focusing on the task to being expressive and focusing on collaboration whenever they see a need. Beyond dominant leadership types and abilities, leaders also vary in their decision making styles. There are three basic styles of leadership decision making authoritarian, democratic, and laissez faire. Leader So here we have the main three branches, like we talk about the authoritarian, the democratic, and let's say fair, which we are just talking about them now. So let's go and see. Leaders who use authoritarian decision making make all the major group decisions and demand compliance from the group members. Authoritarian leaders typically make decisions on their own and tell other group members what to do and how to do it. Authoritarian leadership can be beneficial when a decision needs to be made quickly or when a project or situation is particularly stressful. For example, imagine you're a member of the Okay. So this was a part regarding uh, the democratic and leadership. And uh, uh, here also we have leader style. I need a small one. We can come to it lit later on. Uh, maybe this one is very short for one minute. Can uh, tell us also about the leadership styles. I hope that it won't be uh, like it's all about four minutes. There's no need to even to cut it. For there me. are many highly effective leadership styles. Every leadership style has a time and a place. The laissez-faire leader, for example, is one who recognises that people have the ability to take the work and just run with it. They are not micromanagers. A laissez-faire leader recognises that that is the optimum style for people who know what they're doing. Now, I know that this sounds very obvious. The truth is that there is... That's what we were talking about. We said that the laissez uh, passé a kind of leadership, he has a confidence in his own employees or the team members' uh, uh, capabilities. And he knows that they are very uh, capable to do the work. That's why he uh, helped them also. He gave them the chance to express themselves and the chance to uh, participate with their opinions. He trusts them and he knows that the outcomes of them should be better. Okay. Some people who do need more guidance, they do need a more hands-on type of leader because they are still learning their position. They are still learning their role. They are still learning the tasks associated with their job. So a laissez-faire style leader is one who really understands that people are already well equipped to do their job and they don't need a lot of interference or interjection from their manager in terms of what they're doing and how they're doing it. So this was uh, actually a nice video and you have the site here, the link is here. If you want to watch it back, it tell me in few minutes or less than two minutes. What is what do you mean by let's say uh, fair uh, kind type of leadership? So now I will go back into my own lecture, and I will say uh, my next question because we said here uh, let's say fair we talk about he can make a personal interpersonal relation. Uh, we will say, we talk also about, but before that we will have a question also about the control and see. 
and we'll put for you also a question here, control and V type of leader, then discuss. So you will comment about uh, the type of leader, let's say fair type of leader. Uh, you will comment on these sentence. You will comment on this sentence, the sentence that the safer type of leadership. Uh, that's what I have for the moment for this. Uh... Also, answers should be received on the chat box. Let me remind you the chat box here is the chat box. So you can send the answers on the chat box. We will wait here around five minutes to gather your own answers, to collect your answers. Thank you. So we are back for our work. We are back. And we will talk here also about the uh, We'll move into the next type of the uh, leadership, paternalistic from pattern. Leader acts as a father figure. Paternalistic leader makes decision by, but may consult. So he act like a father. He act like a father. And at the same, same time, he also makes decisions, but may consult. He's the one who do the, who is the one who do actually the decisions, but he might ask for consultant also. Believes in the need to support stuff. And he believes in the needs to support stuff. He's always giving his hand to his stuff. Uh, okay, this type of leader or the paternalistic, paternalistic, pattern from pattern, again, I'm saying he is a father figure. He uh, may consult, but he always take the decision. Mostly he will make the decisions by his own self, but he might consult at some time. And he believe in the needs to support stuff. He know very well when to support the stuff. So those are the paternalistic, uh, uh, type of leadership, the paternalistic type of leadership. And here we go for a next uh, question. Here we go to our next question here today about the uh, paternalistic type of a leadership. And just let us watch it together. Let us uh, answer this question. And I will say here around five minutes, you can send your answers also on the chat box. That would be fine. The patterns of leadership paternalistic this is the uh, another type of leaderships which we handled today together. So we'll stay here around five minutes to have your answers. Then we'll move forward to another part. Thank you.
So we are back. Uh, this was the types of leadership which we talk about today. And we had also um, the change leadership. Uh, we'll talk about the change leadership. Uh, that will be on the next video. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everyone.